It's time to review Wallace and Gromit Project Zoo for the PlayStation 2. To those that don't know, Wallace and Gromit are basically two very famous stop motion movie stars who were so famous they actually saved the cheese company from closure because their products were in their movies. Hooray for product placement! Now at the time the creators of these movies, Ardman Productions, was making a very long movie known as Curse of the Were-Rabbit. And because it would take so long, seriously it came out in 2005. A game was made to stop the fans all over the world rioting. The game begins when Wallace and Gromit are having breakfast, and Gromit reminds Wallace that it's the birthday of Archie, the polar bear they adopted at the zoo, who wears glasses and a scarf for some reason. So they go over to the zoo to celebrate his birthday party when what is considered by many people to be the most shocking thing in the world has happened. The zoo is locked. What kind of sick, twisted, mad individual would cause this kind of madness? Oh, no, no way, it was actually the villain of the wrong trousers, Feathers McGraw. Oops. And he's taking Archie around with him for no reason. So Wallace and Gromit decide to get into the zoo via a gigantic wooden penguin. Oh. Eh, it worked better than the last time someone used it. So they sneak into the zoo and, well, let Wallace tell you what's going on. And look at that yogurt. Some brute stuck it in a cage. Who'd be so cruel and heartless? Feathers mother And he's using his control thing on me to send the whatchamacallit over the Ujima flip. So, playing as Gromit, it's up to you to rescue all the baby animals, save Archie, and defeat Feathers McGraw once and for all. At least until the sequel. Hey, just out of curiosity, what would you think the gameplay of this is if you've never seen it before? Can you guess? A point and click game? You couldn't be more wrong. It's a 3D platformer. I'll get onto that later. And of course, it has your standard platforming controls. The X button jumps, the square button attacks, the circle button equips what's in his inventory which you can access by holding the circle button, and the triangle button can activate switches and whistle Wallace over to help with mechanical related madness. Pressing the R1 button while standing still will allow you to crouch and press X to do a crouch jump, and while running you can do a rolling jump like a Jack and Daxter, and holding the L1 button will provide an over the shoulder view that will help aim your weapon better. You have three weapons throughout the entire game, the completely pointless banana gun, the porridge gun, and the turnip launcher. The banana gun at the beginning just stuns enemies and activate gongs, the porridge minigun can disable the machinery and hit switches more directly than the banana gun, and the turnip launcher is badass because it just simply blows the living crap out of all the enemies. In order to activate certain machinery, Wallace is going to need loads of nuts and bolts, and they're pretty much everywhere, like every traditional platformer and they can also be found by smashing some of the robots that are around. But you're going to also need to find orange things called tools and you'll hear them with this strange whistling noise that I have no idea how to describe. In secret areas and by completing optional main challenges in the levels, you get bonus coins which do nothing but unlock extra movies. Seriously, just collect about five of them and you'll be fine. Why? Because it gets an interview from my favorite Bravo TV show, Gamer TV. Oh god, why do they have to cancel it? The enemies in this game are simply variations of robotic penguins. There are also penguins with flamethrowers, hedgehogs with an anal problem, seriously, when you hit their ass they die. And suicide bomber penguins, nice. There are six zones throughout the entire game with varying lengths. The Arboretum where you rescue baby elephants, the mines where you rescue be beavers, some lava place where you rescue baby gorillas, the warehouse where you rescue baby pandas, the Arctic place where you rescue your baby polar bears, and the Diamond Omanic where you rescue baby zebras, save Archie, and defeat Feathers McGraw. 
Something I have to question in all fairness is the point of the crouch jump. Why, you barely move anywhere. And even worse is that there's actually an optional high jump. Yes, by moving the thumbstick back and forth very quickly, you can do a high jump which is actually better than the crouch jump because not only do you jump higher, but you actually move. Why not have the crouch jump be that? Silly frontier developments. And as I've mentioned, the banana gun is completely pointless because it never hurts anyone or anything. And speaking of pointless, what about the monkeys? The instruction manual says that they were paid to try hurt you, but they vanish after the second level. Well, if you're going to have some reason for them to be there, at least give them a Brian Blessed beard so we can all be happy that they have awesome beards. Good lord. Also, the controls are kind of stiff and it makes jumps very awkward and saving Archie on the diamond matic is an absolute pain in the ass. And I guess I have to go on about this for a second. WHO THE FREAKING HELL PICTURED WILSON GROMIT AS A PLATFORMER?! I mean, I like variations on a concept, but it's just absolutely ridiculous and insanity inducing. I mean, how many people do you know that actually would imagine Walson Grumman as a platformer? Oh, oh, oh god. Well, I was proven wrong. I mean, it's just one of the most unlikely concepts in the world. I mean, it's like making a brain training game out of Asterix. It would be like somehow turning the adventures of Tintin into a platforming game. Oh my god. Oh, come on, there's got to be an unlikely concept somewhere. Um, I got it. The most unlikely idea in the world that cannot absolutely in any way happen is making a game based on Dragon Ball Z where you have a telephone and you answer multiple choice questions. <laughs> みんな。トランクスが乗ってきた過去のオラたちに会いに行けるOne thing I really liked about the game was the level designs. They looked really nice, especially the ice level, which, my god, it looked really, really good. I just had my drop in the minute I actually came out and saw it. And even though I did bring up awkward platforming mechanics, the platforming is actually still quite fun if you don't die. <laughs> and those secret areas are actually pretty damn good if you want to test your platforming skills. Unlike me, I just want to get through the game. <laughs> And it's actually rather well made for a licensed game, which a lot of people say are really, really shoddy. Well, I've yet to play Superman 64. Okay, to be completely honest, the only reason I actually reviewed this game in the first place was because there weren't any other reviews of it on YouTube. But this is definitely a more enjoyable platformer than another annoying platformer I played that drove me insane. So if you want a good PS2 licensed platformer, then go get this one. I give this a Jack and Daxter meaning pretty good. So if you like if you've liked my vids, which is probably why you're still watching this in the first place, then please subscribe if you want. So I'll see you for my next review.